What if I told you that in Battlefield 1's Assault class that only three different primary weapons make up for 83% of the guns used within that class? The Hellregel, the Model 10A Hunter, and the Automatico Storm. That out of 17 different rifles and variants of rifles for the Scout class that only three of those rifles make up around 50% of the total usage within that class? That out of the 22 handguns used in the game, only two make up 50% of total handgun usage in the game. And with multiple of the handguns only being carried by one out of every 50 soldiers you encounter in the battlefield. These are just a few examples of issues of weapon usage and progression in Battlefield 1. Personally, when listening to the larger Battlefield YouTubers discussing the flawed progression system and the imbalance of in-game weapons, I agree with them because although Battlefield 1 is one of the most entertaining titles yet within the series for me, at certain points my friends and I will note the lack of choice within the game's weapon system. Taking a look back into Battlefield 4 at launch, Battlefield 4 had reasonable weapon balance where there were clear advantages and disadvantages to certain features rifles and handguns had within the game. Playing Battle of War, I would rapidly be changing my weapons to fit the situation better. Playing in a role such as the Medic class in Battle of War, I might be choosing between 5 or 6 different rifles depending on my situation, and looking at my Battle of War statistics of the rifles that I actually used within the Medic class, my top 5 rifles only made up 45% of my total rifle usage. My top 5 handguns in Battle of War made up for around 48% of my total handgun usage. This is healthy weapon balance. As a player who played Battle of War as competitively as I could, you could see through the numbers that I would be rapidly changing weapons to adapt to different situations and maps that I was playing in. Yes, the data does show that I did have my favorites, but not to the point of only using three of the rifles available to me and leaving some rifles in the dust with only zero kills over 350 hours of playtime. In Battlefield 1, on the other hand, within my personal statistics, the Automatico makes up for 64% of my total assault class kills. That is one singular gun making up 64% of total assault class kills. The Model 10A Hunter makes up for another 20% of my assault class kills, and the Hellregel makes up for another 10. Basically, instead of five guns taking 50-ish percent of my assault class usage, three guns take up 94% of my assault class usage. Logging on to one of my f Xbox friends accounts who is currently a level 100 in Battlefield 1, his top three assault weapons, support weapons and scout weapons, never went below 80% usage of weapons in that class. And that blatantly shows that educated players within Battlefield 1 have the knowledge to know that only a few weapons are weapons that they should choose, and that there's clear disadvantages to other weapons within the game that don't even make up for the situational advantages that some maps or modes may require. What's interesting about the very few weapons being chosen by a very large population of people in Battlefield 1 is that simply because of Battlefield 1's time frame, much fewer weapons are known by the average player. In comparison to Battlefield 4, where weapons such as an M16 might be chosen over something like the QBZ-95 merely because of the rifle's popularity in real life, the player might have prejudice for one weapon over another, or bias because of past experience with the rifle in another game, real life use, or just mere knowledge of the name and appearance of the weapon. I personally know that my brother Matt, for example, prefers to use weapons that he has used in real life over weapons that he's never heard of, and I agree with that as well. Back when I was a little Modern Warfare 2 player even, I would enjoy playing with the Scar H, as in that same amount of time, my 14 year old self enjoyed playing Airsoft with a Scar H. Therefore, it interests me that in Battle of One, players have even stronger opinions about certain rifles, even though the average player has no knowledge or predetermined bias of the actual rifle name, merely because of the time frame being so long ago and the weapons used in World War One being so unpopular to the average gamer. Refreshing your mind of all these ideas and thoughts really does bring to light just how much of an imbalanced nature Battle of One's weapons have over the past few titles. In my opinion, the imbalances do not inhibit myself from having fun in the game, but over hours and hours of playing Battlefield, it does show that some weapons are merely unusable compared to others. Experimenting with different weapons in Battlefield 4, you'll never find a weapon that is absolutely nerfed to oblivion. Experienced players can still play with some of the worst weapons in Battlefield 4, and still do just as well as somebody playing with the best weapon. But in Battlefield 1, there are major disadvantages to some of the rifles in the game that are clearly shown by their popularity in-game. 
The developers of Battle for One decided to create versions of weapons rather than add more weapons. This isn't very hard to do on the developers part as there's less 3D modeling to do and leaves a lot more weapons for the DLCs, but these versions of weapons have blatantly never mattered to the player base. Competitive and even casual Battlefield players alike will find that certain versions and variants of the weapons are generally much improved over others, and that there aren't many situations where a lesser popular version of this weapon stands out over the most common version of that weapon. For example, the Model 10A Hunter takes up 75% of all usage of all shotguns, and while it's a little brother, the Model 10A Factory only takes up 10%. And then there's the Model 10A Slug that only takes up 2.5%. First of all, those are percentages of all kills within all of the shotguns. Therefore, the Model 10A and all of its versions makes up 87.5% of all shotguns used. When there are three different models of shotguns available in the game, you expect it to be 33.3%, but it's 87. Secondly, the Model 10A Hunter variant takes up a huge majority of the total usage of the Model 10A. You can clearly see players are saying, what's the use in other versions of the gun? Because what's the use in having a slug variant of a shotgun when the overall range of the standard shotgun has been increased since past titles? And also, what's the use in having a variant of a shotgun that can effectively hurt someone over 30 meters, even a little bit, when an automatic go can do it better with no situational disadvantages? Shortly put, in Battlefield 1, there's no need for other variants of the gun when those variants simply aren't as good as one of the variants of those guns. And when the advantages are so high of a certain variant of a weapon, players are less likely to choose different versions of the gun based on the situation or map like they used to in Battlefield 4, 3, and even Bad Company 2, leading to less necessary progression in the game and also less depth to the weapon choice. In the progression system of Battlefield 1, when you reach rank 3 of a certain class, you unlock every single single gun for that class other than the single rank 10 gun of that class. Some of the rank 10 guns actually are much less powerful than the guns available simply after the mirror rank 3, and there's no reason to have that awkward silence of no unlocks between 7 different class ranks just to unlock a weapon that is less powerful than the one you had earlier. The only effective level 10 weapons are from the Assault class and the Scout class, being the Hell Regal and the Martini Henry. And even after the Martini Henry's big nerf, it's almost not used anymore compared to the SMLE, Marksman, or the other bolt-action rifles that have shorter sweet spots. Overall, what this means is that the average player will be using less weapons, and therefore the player will experience a less dynamic game and will feel as if there's less content. Basically, just because the content, statistically around 70% of it, is just not worth using. I feel as if DICE could have made more weapons instead of variants of these weapons, especially when by the time the first DLC is released for Battlefield 1, three DLCs were already released for Battlefield 4. And if somebody's going to throw in the argument that there aren't enough weapons in World War 1 time frame, then I do want to note that there were hundreds of rifles, handguns, and more that were both in use or were in prototype stages during World War 1. A simple Google search of weapons in World War I will show that easily. And even having the larger amount of weapons in Battlefield 4 was a luxury. Even if it was too much for some people, and even if the changes weren't much between one weapon and another, it gave the player a much larger freedom of choice and made the progression in the game actually have meaning and longevity. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I just wanted to kind of make this because it's been covered by a lot of other YouTubers and I've wanted to make the video for a while now about the progression and the weapon balance in Battle for One, but it feels like I, I've just been trampled over by the bigger YouTubers, if you know what I mean. But I wanted to explain my opinion, so hopefully this was a good video. If you liked it, like it. If you disliked it, please dislike it. And tell me why in the comment section down below. I'm trying to increase the quality of my videos, so if you have anything about feedback you'd like to say, then please, I appreciate any type of constructive criticism. Please leave it down in the comment section down below, and I will see you guys in the next one.